In this last episode of Season 1, The Black Queen, Rhaenyra tries to hold the realm together. Beware, spoilers ahead. Luke stands in Dragonstone before the painted table, a massive dragonglass map of Westeros. Luke is concerned that if Corlys Valerian dies from his blood fever, he will be forced to inherit Driftmark, which he does not want. He's no sailor, in the bathtub, he gets seasick. He and Rhaenyra have a nice scene where she assures him that she wasn't ready when Viserys named her his heir. She, on the other hand, decided to earn her inheritance. Rhaenys makes his way to King's Landing. She tells Rhaenyra and Daemon that Viserys has died and that Aegon has been crowned in front of thousands of people. Daemon concludes that Viserys was murdered and that Rhaenys could have burned Team Green to ash but chose not to. The coming war, according to Rhaenys, is not mine to begin. Rhaenyra has a miscarriage. Meanwhile, Daemon is commanding Dragonstone's defenses. He learns that Corlys Valerian is feeling better, but he is still unsure which side he is on. He instructs their crownland's allies, Lord Darklin, of Duskendale, Lord Massey, of Stone Dance, and Lord Bar Emmon, of Sharp Point. He then singles out two White Cloaks members, Ser Laurent and Ser Stefan, to re-swear their fealty to Rhaenyra under threat of dragon attack. Ser Eric Cargill appears at the child's funeral pyre, having snuck away from King's Landing, and carrying Viserys' crown. The funeral attendees bow to Rhaenyra as Daemon places the crown on her head. Except for Rhaenys, who simply gives her a respectful nod. Rhaenyra enters and receives an update on their situation. Their army is relatively small. In addition to the three houses that Daemon sent ravens to earlier, Lords Keltigar, of Claw Isle, and Staunton, of Rook's Rest, have declared for them. They are curious about the other major houses, including Aaron of the Eyrie, Tully of River Run, Stark of Winterfell, and Baratheon of Storm's End. They are also concerned about Corlys Valerian. Against them, the High Towers and the Lannisters, which is a problem because the Lannisters are the major house of the Westerlands. Sunfire, ridden by Aegon, Fager, ridden by Aemond, and Dreamfire, ridden by Helena, are the Green's adult dragons. The Blacks have Cyrax, ridden by Rhaenyra, Caraxes, ridden by Daemon, and Maelys, ridden by Rhaenys. Add to that Rhaenyra and Laner's sons three dragons, Vermax, ridden by Jace, Barax, ridden by Luke, and Taraxes, ridden by young Joff. Moondancer is another, ridden by Bela. On Driftmark, there are also unclaimed dragons such as Sea Smoke, once ridden by Laner. On Dragonstone, Daemon mentions two more currently riderless dragons, Vermither and Silverwing. There are also three wild dragons on Dragonstone, as well as twenty dragon eggs. Daemon proposes gathering the entire dragon horde at Harrenhal in the continent's center and then sending them to surround King's Landing. But before Rhaenyra can weigh in, Otto Hightower arrives with King Aegon's terms. Rhaenyra makes a dramatic entrance on Cyrax's back as they meet on the Long Bridge. The meeting is tense, with Rhaenyra accusing Otto of being a traitor and Otto insisting that because Aegon has all the fancy stuff that kings have, crown, sword, seat on Iron Throne, etc., he is legitimate, and mentioning that three major houses, Stark, Tully, and Baratheon, are currently considering the king's terms. Rhaenyra tosses Otto's hand pin over the bridge, but he then shows her the page she willfully ripped from that book way back in episode 1, which Alicent has kept. Daemon isn't having any of it and begins rattling his sword, but Rhaenyra is moved and orders him to stand down. She informs Otto that he will receive his response the following day. Return to the painted table. Daemon's hugely destructive dragon plan frightens Rhaenyra. She brings up Aegon the Conqueror's prophecy and is surprised to learn that Viserys never mentioned it to Daemon. Daemon snarls at Rhaenyra and dismisses the whole thing as his late brother's obsession with omens. Corlys is doing well, and Rhaenys informs him that his brother Vaemond is dead, murdered by Daemon for questioning the legitimacy of Rhaenyra's sons. Instead, he criticizes Vaemond's heedless ambition. You were right, Rhaenys, Corlys says. Corlys suggests returning home and allowing the Greens and Blacks to destroy each other. But, as Rhaenys points out, Rhaenyra is actually quite good at being a queen, counseling restraint and unity. 
she appears to have the realm's best interests at heart. That's all it takes for him, because, once again, Rhaenys is correct. He is aware of it. He is immersed in it. He approaches the glowing table and notices that houses Aaron, Baratheon, and Stark have yet to declare their support. Corlys, on the other hand, declares for Rhaenyra, informing her that the Triarchy has been routed and that he now controls the Stepstones, and the Narrow Sea. This means they have the ability to sever all sea trade to King's Landing, and Rhaenys offers to patrol the sea by air with her dragon. But Rhaenyra wants to know if the Aarons, Starks, and Barathians will support her. Jace suggests that he and Luke fly their dragons to the three houses and deliver her message. Jace is to travel north in order to deal with the Aarons and Starks. While Luke flies south to Storm's End, House Baratheon seat. But only after Rhaenyra has made them swear that they will not fight. She assures Luke that Boris Baratheon will warmly greet him. Rhaenys takes off from Dragonstone to patrol the gullet, where the narrow sea meets Blackwater Bay, Jace heads north, and Luke heads to Storm's End. Damon descends into the caverns beneath Dragonstone and encounters a massive, old, and not so easygoing dragon. Vermither, the dragon once ridden by King Yaeris, who preceded Viserys, Luke finally arrives at Storm's End. He notices the massive bulk of Hager chilling nearby on his way into the castle. He approaches Lord Boros Baratheon's throne and notices Aemon Targaryen standing nearby, staring at Luke. Lord Boros does not warmly greet Luke. He is offended by the tone of the letter and points out that Aegon offered to marry Aemon to one of Boros' daughters. Luke can't compete with that, so the Lord dismisses him. Aemon demands that Luke amputate one of his eyes in retaliation for the one he stole from Aemon all those years ago. Aemon reveals that he's been carrying a sapphire in the empty eye socket beneath his patch. Boros insists that the children not fight under his roof. However, Luke has some difficulty mounting Arax in the courtyard, the dragon appears agitated. There is a long sequence of Luke flying through a storm, warily looking for Vhagar, who appears with a cackling, taunting Aemon on her back. Luke is outmatched, but he pulls off one clever maneuver, guiding Arax through some chasms too narrow for Vhagar to follow. Then Arax turns around and, much to Luke's chagrin, breathes fire into Vhagar's face before flying above the storm. An irritated Vhagar follows them up and chomps Arax and Luke in half. Damon later approaches Rhaenyra on Dragonstone and informs her of Luke's death. Rhaenyra's eyes well up with tears as she turns to look down. Tears and resolve. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Click like and turn on notifications to help out the channel.